Hey guys, and welcome back to the Reject Demon Togo Chapter Zero Prelude. This is CG Your Gamer Girl signing on. So, yeah, after a long time, it's finally back. This is what will be replacing Curse, because, good god, after that wreck, I need something relaxing. So, I decided to bring back this. Now, the reason it was on hiatus in the first place is because I was testing out something new with recording video and audio at the same time and it wasn't working out. So I had to scrap the recording I did and I just haven't touched it since. Ah, finally back. It's not much, but it's home. When the two enter, Toko notices how small it is. There are no rooms to speak of beyond the bathroom. It has a tiny kitchen that make that Nadia makes do with. The apartment is also only has one bed, positioned across from a small TV. Nadia insists Toko try to watch something on it while she prepares the bathroom. The, spro the prospect of w that one bed suddenly makes Toko nervous. It's already late, and as soon as Nadia got home, she immediately began to prepare the bath. She's probably going to go to sleep afterwards. This little room? Don't you have a family? Huh? Uh, well, I do. But me and my family don't really see eye to eye. Nadia pauses. But never mind. Are you sure you don't want to find your sister? Toko avoids looking at the human. Well, how about a bath then? Of course not! You might try and spy on me! <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. I'm much more subtle than that. <laughs> Say... Toko? Why were you so dismissive towards Ginsho? She seems so sweet. D Ginsho doesn't care about silly things like feelings. Sure she does. She looks sad. Huh? How could you even tell? Intuition. You should be nice to her. She told you about your sister after all. But you meet up with her tomorrow and you'll be able to go home. Isn't that good news, Toko? Yeah. Toko looks away briefly before standing up. I guess I'll go in then. Great. Okay, maybe just a little one. In the bath, Toko puts her, heads, her head on her knees and contemplates what happened to her today. The hot water is a poor comfort that only reminds her of hell and the coldness of the overworld. She wonders where she's going to sleep. Maybe she could sleep on the floor. Toko doubts the human would attempt to share a spot on the only bed with a complete stranger. Then again, Toko's already thought about how to warn Nadia off. When she did start caring about people spying on her, when did she start caring about people spying on her when she was naked? Why did she even care about being exposed? In any case, the day was in many ways completely exhausting for Toko, and she finds herself subconsciously yawning for the first time. Another bit of humanity. Nadia takes her shower once Toko's done. Occasionally, Toko hears noises like soap falling in the tub while the shower runs. The demon rests her head on her knees again and wraps her arms around them. She didn't have any clothes in her size, but Nadia offered her the washed hoodie and a pair of panties. The thought that worries Toko the most is that they were, actual, they were actually very comfortable. With a rush of air, steam billows out of the bathroom and washes Toko's train of thought away. Ooh. She has a towel in hand and carefully dries her hair as she walks into the room. Ah, <sighs> hot showers are the best. I'm getting really tired. Is there anywhere I can sleep? <laughs> well, I only have one bed. I hope you don't mind sharing it tonight. But we might have to squeeze in. There's not much room. Fine. Nadia, who turns red and grins stupidly to herself, walks to the end of the bed and sits next to Toko. The demon looks off to the side. He's, she isn't sure why it's so difficult for her. Why she can't be like a normal demon. Why she's still here in the overworld right now. 
Nadia, noticing that something seems to bother Toko, tilts her head to look at the girl's face. She pulls the he she pulls the towel off her head, folding it as she speaks. Is something wrong, Toko? I I want your soul. My my, that's awfully forward of you, Toko. I'm a demon, Nadia. I was sent here to reap a human soul. And it has to be your soul. A demon, huh? Uh those clothes you were wearing. I knew it was too early for Halloween. What? I'm serious! If it's you, I guess I wouldn't mind. But shouldn't we date first? No. I mean, yes. No. I- ah! <laughs> I'm turning off the lights. Be warned, though. I'm a bit of a cuddler. I'm trying to be serious here. Aren't you scared of me? Nope. Night, Toko. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Aww, and it's Toko that ends up cuddling. Nadia knows what she freaking wants. Well, have you done it? Yes, and a miss. I've been tracking her movements, and she seems to mainly move between her home and school. Are you sure it's the right girl? Yes, little miss. We've been tracking her since and over an extended period to confirm it. Lovely. I don't want Toko escaping. Yes, she certainly has a way of weaseling her way out of situations. Ugh, tell me about it. I mean, that brat was never any fun to play hide and seek with. Of course, the little miss must win every game, even if it means following the seeker everywhere she goes. Absolutely! There's gonna be no cheating me like I cheated her. Indeed, we've made sure to have numerous ages around the city. She won't get out of this so easily. Great. Oh, right. How's the zombie doing? Little miss, you know you've been rebuked for calling her that. No, it's a term of endearment. Well, in that case, she's following Toko, as requested. A bit conspicuously, might I add. Of course. Jeez, can't get her to take anything seriously. Okay, can you hear me yet? Come on, sexy bun, wake up and pay attention to me. Uh, hello, Toko, notice me already? What? That's it, finally, it's about Toko! Good morning! Isn't life grand? Oh, you were calling for me, Nadia? Yeah, you were sleeping pretty soundly. I felt bad for waking you up. Nadia refrains from mentioning that Toko had tossed the lawn in the night and ended up cleaning to Nadia for warmth. She didn't think the girl could take it, as cute as it was. But, on the other hand, your breakfast is getting cold. I would rather sleep. Your tummy says otherwise. Fine. Come on, come on, get your butt ready for breakfast. What is the same? A frittata. It's a specialty of mine, mostly because it's so easy to make. My family recipe has bacon, goes cheese, and a secret ingredient, curry powder! I don't know what any of that stuff is. Then eat it and tell me what you think. Toko pokes it with her fork and cuts off a bite. She spent her whole life without needing to eat, but all of a sudden she can't go a day without her stomach making noises. I shouldn't even need to eat. I'm fine with that. What's icky? Something in my mouth! It's making my tongue hurt! Why did you do to me? Oh, the curry powder is kicking it. It's got a great punch. This is terrible! Make it stop! Fine, fine. Here, you can drink some milk. It'll help. Nadia walks back to the kitchen, opens the fridge, and pulls out a carton of milk. She pours a glass and brings it back to Toko, who snatches the carton instead and downs the whole thing. Ah, <sighs> that helped. Jeez, I'll be out of food in days at this rate. Uh, do you feel better? Want to eat some more? No way, that frittata thing is poison. My stomach feels all gross. Nadia pouts. What a picky eater. She might be a university student, but she's proud of her cooking skills. It's just one slice. I know you're petite and all, but I can eat a whole frittata, no problem. 
Ugh, just thinking about it makes me feel like one of those monsters that keeps spewing up what it eats. Hey now, it wasn't that bad. If you need to throw up, you can use the bathroom. What? Humans do that too? Gross! You mean my humans? Anyway, you look perfectly fine. Well, if you don't like spicy food, I guess we can spend today going to the mall. There's all kinds of different foods to try. The what? And eat more weird food? I don't want to go if that's the case. Tough luck. You need new clothes since mine don't fit you. And I'll need mine back soon. What's the point of clothes anyway? <laughs> what a silly question. You were shivering last night. Even if you don't think you need to stay warm, you absolutely do. I can't keep you warm forever with just my body. <laughs> You'll need to some nice thick sweaters and things before it gets really cold. Fine, I'll go. But no curry! Great, I knew you'd agree. Once we're at the mall, we can go get you some new clothes, try out a bunch of food, and maybe go pop at the arcade and... Oh, Uh, excuse me while I take a drink. Don't go over here. Uh, uh, there's so many clothes. I'm gonna get lost. I did tell you to hold my hand, didn't I? Maybe I just thought it. Anyway, the first thing you need are underwear. Let me know what catches your eye. Uh, sure. Uh, these don't look really soft and boring. These are boring. <laughs> Come over here then. Nidia. Nidia. Nadia. This is a pair that looks very much like a lacy tea bag. Ta da! What do you think? Exciting enough for you? There's no way I'd wear that. Oh, why not? It's not like you were that modest when we first met. That was different. You're making me sad. So which ones do you want? Maybe something more normal than. Any reason you're picking only black things? Well, it looks nice. Fair enough. But try and splash a little colors in your outfits. But once you try them on, we'll move to outerwear. What's outerwear? Huh? They're what you wear over your panties and bras and all that. You don't just wear these like normal? Toko. As soon as you get the chance, please take me to wherever you're from. I need to go there. <laughs> Don't go. Are you blushing? Am I what? Uh, never mind. You do need to find warmer clothes, though. Fine. Let's see. How about this? Oh, such deep and piercing blue like the sea at night. Make sure it fits you, though. Try it on in the changing rooms over there, and I'll give you some more things to try on while you do. Toko leaves through the changing rooms after being shown where they are. She nervously closes the curtain behind her and pulls the ba baggy hoodie over her head to set it aside, leaving her old demon outfit underneath covered by the button-up shirt she wore last night. Looking in the mirror, she can feel the embarrassment which rush back to her over what a suggestive outfit it is. At this point, she's completely content to wear human clothes, an idea that seemed insane to her only a day ago. Now, to try on the underwear. Okay, this one fits, I think. Oh, oh, can I see? Why do you want to see all of a sudden? I know curiosity, I suppose. Toko pops her head out of the curtain and glowers at Nadia. Fine! Don't be such a fuss, though. Oh, it's a little bit tight, but they feel comfortable. <laughs> So this is fine. If you like it, then I like it. Now, try this on. I'm not even sure how to wear this. What? They're just normal jeans. You slip them on. Come on, Toko. You're scaring me a bit. Don't worry. I'll help you out. Not like anyone here will think anything bad about two girls helping each other out in the changing room. There's something in, that to in your tone of voice that I don't like. <laughs> Nadia helps fasten the button on Toko's jeans after trying several pairs of pants and shirts on her. Nadia has taken Nadia, Nadia takes as much liberty as she can to help Toko make sure the jeans fit right. More? And these look way too small to keep me warm. I thought this whole, like, the whole that was the whole point of us coming here. 
No, no, that other pair was too loose on the inseam. You have to get an idea of your measurements to know which of these will be the best fit for you. Besides, you can never have too many, too many clothes. And if you layer them appropriately, you will still be perfectly snug. Nadia tests another pair of jeans on Toko, humming qu quietly to herself as she fastens the buttons and diligently slip zips them up. Toko turns to her turns her head to the side, her face flushing red as Nadia slides her hands between Toko's jeans and her waist, tugging and testing the fit of the clothes. <sighs> remember people, if you plan on doing recordings for YouTube channel or whatnot, remember to have a drink on the side to keep hydrated. These are perfect, but we should really try on some more things. No, this is enough. This will last me two lifetimes. Go put that stuff back. Don't worry about me. I have the money to afford this, but fine. Don't let me have my fun. Yeah, fun. This day's already been more trying than I'd ever imagined. Well, we could take a little break then and get some food and prepare for the world of excitement coming your way. Ugh. Can't wait. Hmm. Glancing around, Ginsho notices a decent amount of people walking down the street. This is good. Uh... What? Oh. You are hungry anyway, right? Okay, good. Looking around to make sure no one is paying attention to her at the moment, she suddenly summons Rhapsody. After doing this, Ginsho unfolds a small box that somehow fits in her pocket, marked with tips and sits in front of her. After a few warm-ups, she starts playing. And while not attracting a large crowd, a few people do toss some coins and dollars into the box. It goes on for a while like this before. You don't have a job? The guy addressing Ginsho sniffs haughtily, looking down his nose at her. This is my side job. <laughs> Well, maybe if you spend more time at the job, at that job than panhandling, you won't need a side one. You do not know that. Do you have a song request? For a moment, he appears taken aback by the lack of reaction on Ginsho's part. Um, if not, I will continue playing. Well, that's... You are being rude and disturbing people who want to listen. I doubt they appreciate that. Most likely because of Ginsho's deadpan manner, her heckler becomes uncomfortable and walks off, muttering about weird girls on street corners. However... Ah! Uh -huh. What the? I tripped! On what? He looks back at Ginsho, sending her a glare. Ginsho gives him her usual deadpan look as response. D did you trip me? I am nowhere near you. At least 12 feet and 8 inches away. Well, I... You... Ginsho continues playing and ignores the sounds of indignation and confusion. Twenty minutes later, she stops to count how much money is in her box, which unfortunately doesn't seem to be that all that much. Twenty dollars and ninety-eight cents. Hmm. This will not buy me that much food. I suppose I could save this for a second lunch. Maybe I could do something else until then. Hmm? Should I? That was mean earlier. I guess that is true. Alright, we can do that. Sounds like fun. See? Those look great on you. I guess. What is this place? It's really smelly. Hey, that's no way to talk about the finest cuisine a mall has to offer. Now, what catches your eyes and nose? What is this even for? Food. You can't really expect to not eat. You'll get sick. What? Really? How often am I going to have to eat? You can't be serious. At least three meals or so a day, obviously. That sounds awful. Well, how does your tummy feel right now? Rumbly. Then you definitely need food. Come on, pick whatever looks good. It's all pretty cheap, so you can grab things from a few different places. We bought nearly every dish from the first three restaurants you saw. Well, you said that I should try different things! I didn't mean- Never mind, we already bought it. You better eat everything you made me pay for! I will! Ugh, 
How do I eat this thing? The pizza? Just pick it up and bite into it. It's easier if you start from the pointy side. Pointy end. Right. You're getting sauce and pepperoni all over your face. Let me clean it off. Hey! What was that? Hmm? What? I was cleaning your face. But you licked it! So, what do you think of the pizza? Did she really just try to change the subject? Greasy. That's all you had to say about it? Yeah. So disappointing. You're not counted out for fast food. Mm. The baked potato probably isn't too greasy. Except for all the bacon and butter. Which one's that again? The weird blobby starch thing? That's the one. Mm, it's kind of bland. Ah! Oh. What's this white stuff? It's really tangy. Sour cream. I like it. You can have it. You're not easy to please, are you? Maybe if you weren't so fickle, you would still be back wherever you're from. Then, uh, just let me find something I can eat. What about this thing? Is this some kind of pizza? Oh, that? That's a pie. Looks like you got cherry, which is perfect for you. Of course, you're probably complaining about that the sweetness hurts your teeth. Mm -hmm. this, this is really good. Oh, you like cherry pie, huh? I want more of this. <laughs> well now, I'd be happy to feed you pies whenever you want, Toko. As the two eat, a quiet spy watches from one of the food lines, tracking Toko's food intake and Nadia's doting over the former demon. Oh, the line has moved. Yes, food gatekeeper. I request 30 sweet and sour tacos, 12 servings of wonton french fries, 2 family servings of dim sum ravioli with wasabi pesto. Three large bubble teas and one box of chocolate cream moon cakes. The clerk la laughs nervously at the order and, after asking several times if it's serious, calls the manager over to confirm everything is okay. He puts in the order and Ginichou places a stack of money on the counter. As the cooks work to fill Ginichou's order, she turns her eye once more to the reject demon and the human girl with her. Oh man. <clears throat> Nothing seems out of the ordinary between the two, although she does make a note that Toko seems to enjoy eating human food. Ginjo takes her tray of food and deftly carries them to an empty table, far enough not to be noticed, but close enough to still overhear what's being said. It's mostly arguing and gentle teasing. For a less demon, Toko has no sense of innuendo. Okay, I can't eat anymore. Do we have to eat all this? I suppose we could take the rest as leftovers for tonight. It's still kind of early to go home, though. Nadia pauses for a moment, considering what to do. Toko glances around, and observing the humans in the mall when Nadia speaks again. Oh, let's visit the arcade. The arc what? Uh, wow. I know they're not very common anymore, but you don't even know what that is? Where are you from again? Uh. Toko realizes she's probably not the best liar, and considers how she could phrase this without directly lying about it. Out of the country? Toko winces, realizing how vague and not at all convincing she sounds. If you say so. It dawns on Toko that Nadia doesn't really seem to be buying that excuse, which she can't exactly blame her for. However, before she can say anything, Nanina puts her hand on Toko's lower back. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to make sure we stay together, since it's pretty crowded. I can stop if you want. N no, it's okay. Okay, let's go then. Okay, this one is called Super Moe Dance Rangers. Why are their eyes so big? It's just design. They take up half their face. I think it's cute. I think it's scary. So anyway, here's how you play. It's a rhythm game, and explaining the basics, however, doesn't seem to do to much good for Toko, who seems unable to grasp how to play. Even after Nadia attempts to hold her hands and hips to guide her along, Toko is too slow or too fast for the timing. Oh, hey, hey. Ah. Um, maybe rhythm.
rhythm games just aren't your forte. You were good at it. I've just had more practice. The trick is dedicating hours of your time to get better, like any skill. I'm not going to do that. Fine, fine. Here's a different game. It's called Heart of Ice, Mind of Fire. Nadia points to her an arcade machine that has a person with a blue heart and a red hair flaming head. It's just a bunch of words. Um, some less of a game and more of an interactive book. What's the point of it? Well, you read it and see what happens, I guess. But all you do is read these words. And people actually pay for this? Well, maybe it's a little too pretentious. How about Ski Ball? Toko frowns at the name. It doesn't even remotely tell her what it could be. I guess. Great, how's your aim? I don't know. I could help you through oh, if you need it. Trust me, it's a really fun and simple game. So, you have these balls, and there are these circles. Ugh. I suppose a small snack would be nice. She walks up to a pretzel stand named Uncle Uziel's. Hmm. It says our pretzels are heaven sent. I wonder if I will get in trouble for eating here. You have a point. Food gatekeeper, how many pretzel dogs can I get with 20 human dollars? Uh, about 10. If I get five of those, how many pretzel burgers can I get? P probably four. Would or would there would not be money left over for a drink? Uh, maybe a medium? Then I would like to have five pretzel dogs with everything, four pretzel burgers with everything, and a strawberry soda. E yes, ma'am. While waiting for food, Ginsho glances over and notices Toko and Nadia in the distance. Hmm? Probably, but I just ordered food. She really is being rather unobservant. Ginsho turns away when the clerk calls to her for that her food is ready. Yes, thank you. You don't need help with that? That will not be necessary. Taking it to a nearby table, Ginsho sits and goes about eating. It takes her about 10 minutes to get through all of it. If only I earned more money today. Ginsho begins to wander th towards the arcade when she's approached by a strange man. Mm, excuse me. Wow, I saw you eat that in like 10 minutes. Impressive. With your skills and my coaching, you could dominate the competitive eating scene in the city. Competitive eating? Totally. Here, take my card. You could be the next champion. After absently taking the card, Ginjo continues her path towards the arcade. Champion. I am the champion. Back at the arcade, Toko seems to have discovered a newfound talent in Ski Ball, manage having managed to earn about 50 tickets so far. Seeing Toko enjoying herself, Nadia looks around to find a game she could play when she knows it's Gin Show outside the arcade. Oh! She waves at Gin Show, whose nonchalant stride takes her inside. Toko glances up at Nadia's exclamation and twitches when she sees Gin Show. She glares at Gin Show as she approaches and stuffs her tickets in her pockets. Hi! You're Toko's friend from before, right? We are acquaintances. Right, it was... Gina? Ginsho. Oh, my mistake. I... What do you want, Ginsho? Toko, that's rude. Nadia is right. I should talk to Nadia instead of Toko. Urgh, you're the one following us and I'm the rude one? I was not following you this time. Earlier, yes. But now I am here for food and entertainment. You can't even taste the food! I do taste it. Food is not just in the mouth. It is also in the soul. The heart. Toko is taken aback and stunned into silence, having not expected something like this from Ginsho of all demons. Why else would getting food we love fill us with pleasure or invoke fond memories? Aww, that's really sweet. Uh. Also, Rhapsody likes to watch. Regaining her composure, Toko resumes glaring at Ginsho. Whatever, just get lost and leave us alone. Toko, I get you, they, I get you two don't seem to get along, but that's no reason to fight. 
Nadia is right. She has a good head on her upper torso area. I will make you leave if I have to. Don't push me. Don't go. Are you even listening to me? I'm not here to find out all. Well, now I am. Nadia nervously glances around when she realizes they've started attracting a small crowd. She ties to Toko's shoulder for a moment. Toko, please, we're making a scene. I advise, I again, once again advise listening to Nadia. Let's go, you weirdo human food eater! When you have been here long enough, Toko, you too will understand the heart of food. That's it! Nadia, stand back! Uh, Toko, don't! Come on! I am not here to fight you. Then just stand there, it makes this easier. Yeah! Toko sprints towards Kinsho, fist raised to attack. She only gets within five feet of Kinsho before suddenly falling flat on her face. Well, Toko gets to her feet and sends Kinsho an, effective, an ineffective death, scare, death stare. That was a cheap trick and you know it! It was an obvious one that any other demon would have seen coming. Do not blame me for your lack of skill. Toko once again charges at Kinsho, this time aiming a kick at her. However, she immediately feels pressure on her supporting leg. It buckles as she falls to the ground. Rolling herself onto her butt, Toko grips the knee, now steaming from the hard mall floor. Ow! Why can't you just fight fair? Damn it, Toko, you're causing a scene! You do not seem to understand how demons fight at all. You were right. Toko probably does not understand how to fight anyone. And you just don't add insult to injury. Great. You are defeated. I will see you later, Toko. Nadia. Ginsho saunters off in victory while the sound of smug giggling follows after her. Realizing the fight appears to be over, the crowd disperses. Toko, are you okay? And what on earth were you thinking? How can I be expected to beat something I can't even see? Huh? See what? Did you really have to fight her? She was going to take... She could have done something to us! Uh, look, I don't appreciate being followed around either, but I doubt... Never mind, just... You got really carried away. Sorry. She wasn't doing anything. Why did you try to fight her? You met well? Uh-huh. Could you help me walk? My knee hurts. Here, let me feel. Ow! Ugh, it's probably bruising. You should put ice on it when we get back. Excuse me, ladies. I'm a mall security. Uh-oh. Crap. Man, what a loser. How did I get sound with so much pathetic as her? And that's actually where I'm going to leave this episode. I'm actually glad to come back to Toko. It's been a while. I had to rewatch the first episode just to find out where I was to be able to pick up where we left off. So, until next time, this is the Gamer Girl signing off. Bye bye!